All right, so the main point of today is just to get our feet wet with some code and to really start to understand how code actually works, what it is and how it works. First thing first, you should be inside of something that looks kind of like it is on my screen right now. It should say first scene on the top left of your screen showing what scene that you are in. And then there should be just a main camera below that. If there's a directional light still, just left click on it and then you can hit your delete key or you can right click and then you can hit delete to get rid of it. We don't need a light inside of our game. Sometimes Sometimes life is like this dark tunnel. If you're not inside the first scene, you can click on where it says scenes on the left hand side of this assets folder right here on the bottom left. And then when you click on scenes, it'll open up your scenes and then you should be able to double click on that and open up your first scene. If you click in your scripts folder over here, there's a script that's already inside of there. It's going to be named something different than mine, but there is going to be a script inside of there that uh, the universal render pipeline gives us. You can go ahead and delete that by left clicking and hitting delete, or then you can right click it and then hit delete through that method method and then it'll also be in delete action there you can hit enter or left click that delete button to get rid of it okay so with the setup out of the way let's get started and let's just go ahead and make our first script so if you left click on our main camera we'll go ahead and just make that first script right here on this main camera so by left clicking on that you'll see add component over here on the right hand side you can close in all these arrows because we're not going to be using anything else that's on this camera for now and then we're going to add our first script to the camera. Why are we adding it to the camera? Well, simply because I want to get us started as quickly as possible. And I don't want to talk about game objects yet. So if you are more familiar with Unity, you know this is not common practice. But we're not going to do things in a lot of common ways at first in phase one. We're going to do them in a quick and dirty way so that we can get started. So let's do this. Add component. You will see a screen that looks like this after you click add component. Now you can add a script in a couple different ways. But no matter how you go about it, no matter what what you type inside of here as long as it's something that's not an option like if you type an event there will be something in here but the bottom option will always be new script better yet if you just write in new script new script will pop up or if you type in anything that's not that doesn't exist already you can click on this new script button right here and then it will automatically populate the name of that script into there that thing that you typed in but you can rename it anything that you want at this point so we're going to go ahead and name it first script now this name right here does matter this is the part that matters guys you can rename it later on but it's a pain in the butt so i recommend getting this right and then you can hit create and add eventually it'll completely load up and you'll see first script pop up inside of the main camera if you don't have your main camera selected it won't show up there so you have to left click your main camera and first script should be right there if you click this grayed out area right here where it says first script it doesn't look like you can click it you can though and it'll turn it yellow down here in the bottom screen and it'll also go into whatever folder it's in so if you're in your settings for instance and then you have your main camera selected and then you left click on first script it'll bring you to your first script you can then take this and drag this over to your scripts folder just to stay organized. And just like that, we've gotten set up and we're ready to open up our first script. You can do that by double clicking on first script, or you can go to your main camera and double click that grayed out area that looks like you can't click it and it'll open up Visual Studio for you. So right off the bat, you're not supposed to understand diddly squat about what's going on. And in this side of the series, you might feel lost quite often. Sometimes life is like this dark tunnel. Don't worry, I'm going to reiterate, re-explain, just keep pushing forward because eventually, hopefully you'll get it because the point of the series is to expose you to things continuously. All right, so let's delete these things at the top using system.collections, using systems.collections.generic, select it all, highlight it with semicolons and all, hit delete. And then you hit delete again to get rid of that ugly black space and you'll just have using unity engine at the top of your screen with that semicolon then you're going to take this whole update with the comment down below so everything from down below this bracket right here and just delete it and then you can go ahead and get rid of the start comment as well you should end up with a very clean looking bit of code that looks kind of like this without any understanding of what's going on or if you're just in here for a refresher that's okay as well now you'll notice that mono behavior is color isn't changed. The color of this should match up with the first script color on here. And for it not to have changed means that things are not compiling correctly, that Unity and Visual Studio are not communicating very well. And you'll see that this happens quite often. It's quite a buggy relationship. So let's go over here to where it says void start and we'll start working on this bug. If you say debug, you have to have that capital letter in front, just like I do, and make sure that you have this completely match. You're going to hit a period or a dot, depending on what you call it, and do capital L-O-G. 
do some parentheses, then you can put some quotes inside of here, and you just say something on there, it doesn't matter. You go to the end of the parentheses and you say a semicolon. And that'll get rid of that ugly red squiggly line, because that semicolon tells the code that it's done running. We have not explained any of this yet, that's okay. Now, for debug and log not to change color, that means that the system doesn't know what they are supposed to be because it kind of gets that it should maybe know what it is, but it doesn't have any clue. So if you hit control S to save or command S if you're on a Mac to save, and then you go back to Unity and then you run this, and then you go to your console and you'll see hi print out there. So our debug.log is working, even though the colors did not change, the code is still compiling and running correctly inside of Unity. Now, if you go back to Visual Studio and then you exit out of there and then you reopen your first script by double clicking that gray area, well, hopefully things change color and work for you. So let's go ahead and make another change, save it, let it recompile and then reopen the first script again. And there we go, the colors change. You might need to do that a couple times and try it without running the game and stuff. We don't know where that compile error is coming from. It, sometimes you just gotta work with it. And once it starts working, it tends to keep on working for a while. Now, let me show you why you want this to have worked correctly in the first place, why we go through the trouble of restarting Visual Studio when it's not working correctly. If I put the capital D in here now, it'll start giving me suggestions. This means that the IntelliSense, Microsoft's auto completing function gives you suggestions on how things work will start functioning correctly you can see debug is on here now it's one of the list of options that starts with a capital d so if i put in a lowercase e it starts to become the top option and we can double click it and it'll automatically fill in there we hit this dot inside of it and it'll show us all the things that debug has access to again you don't need to completely understand this right now it's completely okay if you don't now, if we go down to log, which we just used, which is what created that message for us that said hi, and double click it, you can see that that is now in there. And we don't have to remember what we have to use from debug. We can go, oh man, how do I print information? Was it print or what was it? And you can kind of look through all these functions to try to remember what you were supposed to use. And Unity, a lot of times, put notes on there, logs the message to the Unity console. Oh, debug.log is what I was looking for. You put the parentheses on there, it'll show you kind of an example on here. So debug.log and it'll tell you what it needs to take in that message right there, right? And so you can go ahead and put a message down inside of this. And in this case, you can, it can take in some quotes. Just know that whatever you put in these quotes right here will be printed onto that log that we saw high print out to earlier. And then you put a semicolon right here at the end to signify that we've come to the end of that code. Now, at this point right here, we're expecting you to understand nothing, nada, not even one character of what I just talked about. You're not supposed to understand anything. It's okay, guys. We're going to explain things on a deeper level. We're really just trying to get a grasp for how code works and to write our first bit of code. But before we get on that, I'm going to give you guys a challenge. And before I give you that challenge, I'm going to explain to you why challenges are so vital to you succeeding inside of this series. The truth is humans do not learn by seeing. They don't learn by hearing. That's a bunch of baloney. They learn by doing. If you want to learn archery, you pick up a bow, you pick up some arrows, and then you find something to shoot at, like an apple on somebody's head, and then you fire at it. Hopefully after you've gotten better and you can aim correctly. If you want to know karate, you go practice karate moves and you spar with people. If you want to get better at peeling apples, you get a knife and you get an apple and you start peeling. The point is that by doing, it forces your bodies to adapt. By being forced to adapt, you learn. See, all learning is, is your brain rewiring itself to do something. And if you're not doing anything, if you never put your brain under any kind of strain, then it will not rewire itself to do diddly squat. It just won't do it. We start off with a low strain on here, the equivalent to doing one single push-up. Up, right and we go over here and I'm gonna give you a really simple challenge to start off with and as time goes on these challenges will get progressively harder they'll go from one push-up to two push-ups to three push-ups to 20 push-ups to benching to benching a hundred pounds to benching 150 pounds to benching 200 pounds to benching 400 pounds you know it goes up and up till you get to the point where you're strong enough to do this on your own you don't need me anymore <laughs> So challenges are hyper important because they make you do something. And when you do something, you will learn 10 times faster. But I'm not your mom. Shy. And I can't make you do these things. I'm just telling you why they're important. And to be honest, I, I just don't 
care. Like, if you don't want to get anything out of this, then I'm not here to make you get something out of this. You can watch this for whatever reason you want to watch this. If the point of this for you is to learn how to code, then I deeply recommend doing these challenges. Okay, so the first challenge here is to simply write in what you want the council to log out to you. Just make your first sentence on here. Pause the video until you've completed the challenge. All right, so if I can write anything I want onto here and just to kind of display that, it doesn't have to be anything coherent. It can be any combination of numbers, letters, symbols, anything. Oh, except for another quote, because it ends the quote, of course, right? <laughs> but there are ways to write quotes in there. We're just not gonna show you yet. And the important part is you can have things like parentheses and semicolons in there, like so, which is why we have to have strings inside of quotes, because if it didn't, Unity would think that this whole function was ending right here, this whole log, and it would think this line of code's ending right there. But these symbols can be used within the quotes to be part of the quote, to be part of the string, to be part of what we're printing out. So going back into Unity, if I hit the play button now, you'll see that ridiculous line of text that I put into there, print out down there in the bottom, spaces and all. So going back into our code, we can start to see what's going on. Now let's explain this a little bit better. So how does this work? You see, anytime a piece of code is called, anytime a piece of code is executed, something tells this code to run. So what is making the start right here run? It's specifically this part right here that's running, right? If I was to put in something like void blah, so, and I was to copy this and to paste this down here and just to write, ha 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 blah is here or something like that i i don't know what i'm doing guys seriously no clue and then i go over to unity what's going to happen when i hit play well we still get that really really messed up like code that i had earlier like i don't know what that thing is supposed to mean down here in the bottom and we have no blahs here ha 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 going on down there in the bottom of the screen and by the way guys if you have no text at all but you have a number over here on the right hand side, click this number over here and make sure that you're in council, not project over here as well. So if you click council and then you go over, you'll see it come up because you can click this off by accident. Anyway, if you click back off the play button right there, you can see that blah ha ha is not happening. In other words, it's just this start that's running on here. So we're going to start talking about that later on, what functions are and how this runs. But for now, all you need to know is that between this bracket right here and this bracket right here, this stuff is all happening. Everything that's inside of this will happen inside of our code will run when where our game first starts, right? That's all you need to understand right now. And that's happening because something's running this start in here for us and it wasn't running blah or anything else inside of these brackets right here. And so the only thing that you're supposed to grasp right now, so don't get too caught up in what this is and what these brackets are. The only thing that you're supposed to grasp right now is everything that's between these two brackets, the two that are highlighted right now is going to run when the game starts. Something is making that start. So once this starts, all this stuff is ran from top to bottom, left to right. That's how code works. Top to bottom, left to right, right? So what happens if I do something like this? If I hit the enter key after log and then I save it and then I go to run it inside of our game, right? What happens? Take a guess. Do you think it will run or it won't run? Going back into Unity. I hit the play button and nothing's changed. The timestamp changed. What's printed out, exactly the same thing. Nothing changed. Why is that? So let's make first line, just so that we can be a little bit more coherent. And then for a challenge for you guys, go ahead and make a second line print out. This is just to display to you that you don't have to absolutely understand exactly what's going on to use something. You just copy it. You get onto the line below that and you paste it. And then you can just simply write second where we previously wrote in first. And you're going to be doing this a lot in the first four videos. You don't have to understand what debug.log means. You just have to be able to print out lines of text for now. Four or five videos from now, you're going to understand what everything on the screen does and why it works and what calls what. That's a further down the lines thing. This is about exposure. So keep on pushing forward. Forward, friends. You can't always see the light at the end of the tunnel, but if you just keep moving, you will come to a better place. The only things you're supposed to understand is everything between these two brackets happens when the game runs. And if I copy and paste this, the things that are inside these quotes in the middle here will print out on our console. Those are the only things that you're supposed to get right now. 
And even that, I'm going to repeat a couple times. If you're feeling a little lost right now, don't worry about it. So debug.log, let's go ahead and run this one more time on here. And you'll see first line pop up and second line pops up, right? So there seems to be no rules is what I was trying to showcase by throwing in a bunch of spaces and, and showing that it still worked inside of Unity. The rules don't seem to be very consistent. And to get the consistency, to get the underlying rules that are underneath everything, you have to really know what's going on, how this program works, how code works in the first place. So pay close attention because this is the main point of this video right here. You see this stuff right here, debug and log and all this stuff right here that's on the screen, all these words, they don't make sense to the computer. The computer actually has a program that actually reads through all of this and translates it into actual machine code. This is an actual name for it, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to call it a translator. We have to get to know it pretty well because it's what determines the rules that we have to follow. So real quick, let's just run a real fast simulation of how this translator works. So when void start runs, it starts right here inside this bracket. It goes, okay, I'm running void start. So the translator goes into here and it goes, okay, I'm going to read through it. And this translator is made by humans, obviously, it's a program. So it starts right here at the top of this bracket, and it reads it just like we do, top to bottom, left to right. It goes through all these blank spaces, and it just skips over them. It goes, okay, these mean nothing to me. We don't have to care. I have the first important symbol here, and then it sees the next important symbol happen right here, this capital D. It goes all the way until it hits the next symbol, starts counting from this first letter all the way over to the G right here. And that's the first thing that it actually thinks is important. That's what the translator thinks is important. And it goes, okay, I need to know what this is. Now, if this thing doesn't exist, say they, somebody misspelled it to degug, then the translator goes, I don't know what this is. This doesn't exist to me. Oh, uh, what is this? And so you'll get this error because it tells the Visual Studio, hey, no idea what this thing is. Please help me. So, so the rules that it follows is that it just kind of ignores these spaces until it hits something that's important. And then it reads through it all until it hits something that tells it to stop reading, which is this dot in this case. But it could actually be a space as well. That also tells it to stop reading. When it hits the first character, it goes, okay, I'm on begin, thinking that this is one important thing. And then and when I hit the next space or next character that tells me to stop, I'll think that thing's important. That's why debug is highlighted right now. Once it hits this dot, it knows what this means and it does something based off of it. You don't need to know what that is. There's a bunch of symbols that do things. These parentheses, this semicolon, spaces also tell it to stop reading, right? So you can't put a space in between the L and the O because it tells it to stop reading. So because spaces just tell it to stop reading and don't tell it that the code has ended, then it gets to the semicolon. The reason why the semicolon is so important is because it tells it if I push enter a bunch of times, the semicolon is what tells it that, okay, we're supposed to run our code now. And then it kind of goes all the way back to right here, right? It goes all the way back to where it first started running. It knows that this line of code really starts at this D and it goes all the way to the semicolon and it executes the code based off of that. Until it hits the semicolon, it doesn't have enough information to know what it's doing because this because everything that happens before the semicolon all the way up and through there they're interrelated information right and you don't need to fully understand that right now just know that the semicolons are important because spaces exist the main takeaways here are once it thinks something's important once it hits a character or something that it thinks is important it'll read through it until it hits something that stops it and then it'll look that thing up and it'll continuously follow through on that process until it hits a semicolon and that's when it executes that code now that's a greatly simplified version of what it actually does. It's a lot more complicated than that, guys. It's I know somebody's gonna go into the comments and be like, that's not actually how code works. I'm gonna save this and let's go on forward. So the point of today's lesson is just to get your feet wet with code. As soon as you've done these two things right here, you're good. Again, you're not expected to understand what debug.log means. You're not supposed to get it yet. What I am expecting for you to kind of grasp at this point that once something's executed, that it reads from top to bottom, left to right. The thing is when it's reading code, some symbols do things like making it so that it will not do anything. The program that reads this program, if it reads a forward slash forward slash, it knows that it's not supposed to do anything with that line of code. And by line, I mean everything that's on that physical line. So if I type in anything over here, it doesn't do anything. But if I continue to type over here, it thinks that it's supposed to be running that code. Well, this is called a comment and it's useful for putting notes inside of your code. And that's important because code
code can get to the point where it's, you know, thousands upon thousands, sometimes even like tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of lines of code. And when it gets to being that large, you need notes inside of your code so that you know what's going on at certain parts. In this case, we're just going to put a friendly reminder to us because we're beginners right now and we want a friendly reminder of what this does. Everything in these brackets runs when the game starts. So we'll just put ourselves a friendly reminder in there and it won't do anything different. Now, last thing I want to talk about, and this thing is probably worth more than the rest of this tutorial put together. Like this whole series is not going to be worth as much as this information is right here. Like if you have a hard time like me knowing that this is a forward slash or what a backslash is, then I have great news for you. There is a really easy way of telling. You see, if you pretend like it's a person, if the person's leaning back, that's a backslash. If the person's leaning forward, that's a forward slash. Isn't that crazy guys? Like I had such a hard time remembering which slash was which until I just figured this out. Like, like literally this was a couple weeks ago. I keep on having to look this up for when I'm making tutorials because I'm like an idiot and I can't remember which slash is which. So uh, yeah, this is pretty useful in case you guys have the same problems I have. So if you do two forward slashes, that will create a comment for you to put that nice little note inside of your uh, system here. And that's all I want to do inside this first video. This, this first video, again, just meant to get your feet wet, guys. Again, it's not supposed to really understand what's going on yet I just want to tell you how code works there's a program that actually looks through your code here and decides how it works it looks at something that's being ran so in this case void start and it goes from top to bottom left to right that's all you're supposed to really know at this point top to bottom left to right once it starts and everything inside these brackets right here is ran when the game first starts that's all you're supposed to get right now if you got something beyond that that's really cool if you didn't get anything beyond that also really cool if you didn't even understand that much also really cool do not stress guys i will explain things again and more now i know this is like a pretty in-depth discussion just to kind of get started with here and i don't know if you guys are gonna like these in-depth discussions or if you want a quicker tutorial series please let me know in the comments below it'll really help me like shape the series around what you guys respond to please like subscribe leave a comment it means so much to me when you guys interact with me i have a patreon down in the description below if you wish to support the channel further and by far the most of all i'm so grateful for your time i'm so so aware hyper aware of how valuable time is and the fact that you guys spent this time with me is so meaningful i just want to thank you so thank you for spending this time with me i hope that you all have a great day bye